Hey guys, Alberto here with OMG Bugs. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I took a picture of this dead jumping spider. Now I know a dead insect isn't the most exciting thing in the world to photograph, but if you happen to find one, you know, floating on your pool or maybe in your front or backyard, I think it's a very good opportunity to practice some macro skills. You know, so next time you find a dead bug, instead of going, Ugh, you might go, hmm. All right, so I did use a lot of equipment to take a photo of this jumping spider. So I'm gonna bring it out one at a time, tell you what it's called, why I'm using it. And if you're interested in any of those, I'm gonna have links in the description below. Those links will be affiliated. So if you have purchased any of those, that will help the channel. Thank you so much. All right, with that out of the way, let's take our first item out. First thing we're gonna use is this newer metal tripod. It's very sturdy. It's awesome. I love it. We're gonna set that up to hold our camera and a few other things. So let's go ahead and set that up. There we go. The next thing I'm gonna use is this Super Mag slider from Bellbond. Uh, what this essentially does is allow me to move the camera left, right, forward, or back in very small increments. And when you're working in macro photography, this is very helpful. This is one of the cheaper options, but there are more expensive ones, even automatic versions, but I can't afford that. So we're just gonna stick with this for now. Let's go ahead and put it on the tripod. There we go. The next thing we're gonna use is our camera and lens. And this is only something crazy people like me buy. The lens attached to this is the MP 65 millimeter lens from Canon. And it essentially just does macro photography incredibly well. It goes from close to super close and it costs about a thousand dollars. So only buy that lens if you're very, very interested in macro photography. And that camera attached to it is a 5DSR from Canon. It has 50 megapixels, and the reason I got it is just for more detail in my photos. You don't really need this camera or even this lens, but this is just like the crazy person macro dream setup almost. With that out of the way, let's go put this on the tripod. The next thing we have is this metal platform type thing. What I essentially use that for is to move my subjects up and down. I mentioned earlier that the macro rail slider allows me to move the camera left, right, forward, and back, but I can't very easily move it up and down. And what this allows me to do is move the platform up and down very smoothly. So let's go ahead and put that in front of the camera. Right there should be pretty good. So now that the platform is ready, I'm gonna go ahead and put my subject in front of the lens on the platform. And I have my subject over here on a little piece of paper. There we go. The next thing we're gonna set up is a desk lamp. Now I'm gonna use this desk lamp to help me focus, but not take the photo. So let me go and take that out now. There we go. Now, before we go further, I wanna make sure that the spider is in the correct position for my photograph. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna turn this light on, which is very bright. And we're gonna turn this camera on. And you're gonna see what it looks like so far. I'm gonna use the macro rail slider to move left, right, forward, back. And then I'm gonna use this platform, move it up and down to where I need the spider to be for the photo. So let me go ahead and switch to the camera. So he's not exactly centered in the frame. So what we're gonna do is use the macro rail slider to center him and bring him in focus. And then we're gonna use the metal platform to move him up and down to the correct place. So let's go ahead and center him with the macro roll slider. I'm gonna move the first knob to the left. To about right there. And then I'm gonna move the other knob to bring him in focus. And this is pulling the camera back slowly. Maybe I'll bring them down just a tad. And then we're gonna recenter him with the macro rail slider. And then refocus one more time. And that looks pretty good right there. While we're at it though, it does look a little black in the background. And when I take the photo, I don't wanna have black. Even though it is a dead spider, I do want to make it look like he's maybe alive. So what we're going to do is add some moss. So I have this little piece of fake moss from Hobby Lobby that I picked up a few weeks ago. We're going to place it behind the spider and it's going to look green and maybe kind of more naturalish. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's 
There you go, just like that. So now that our subject's in place, the background's in place, and the camera's in place, we now we need proper lighting. And proper lighting comes in the form of speed lights with soft boxes attached. When it comes to macro photography, if you want to improve your macro photography very quickly, all you have to do is get a speed light with a soft box attached to it. This makes anything just look great. I do recommend this soft box in particular. It's a 9x9 by Newer, and it's pretty inexpensive. As for the flash, I wouldn't recommend to start with Canon because they're pretty expensive and there's other cheaper options that do the same thing. If you want to get a flash, which I do recommend, I recommend you start with a cheaper option like the Yang Nuo. And I think there's a newer brand flash also that's even cheaper. I'll link those down in the description. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and set this up on a stand. All right, there's the first light. And now I'm going to set the second one over there behind the subject. There we go. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to connect this sync cord to the camera. And all that does is send a signal to the flash. So it fires the flash when the camera takes a photo. Let's go ahead and hook that up. All right, everything's finally set up and we're finally ready to take the picture. But before we do, we got to talk about camera settings. Right now, the camera is set to 4.5 aperture, 200 ISO, and a shutter speed of 1, 125. And the flashes are set pretty high. The front one's set to 1 8th power, and the one in the back is about 132 power. And finally, the camera is set to a two second delay when I take the photo. I do this so I can get the sharpest photo possible, because after I press the shutter button, the camera is still wiggling for a few seconds, but those two seconds are enough time to help the camera stop moving and then take the photo. All right, so finally, we're ready to take the photo. Let's take the photo. So that looks pretty good right there, but I want to add a little more depth of field. I could increase the f-stop number, but that sometimes makes things less sharper. And I want to keep it as sharp as possible. So instead, what I'm going to do is focus stacking. Focus stacking is essentially taking multiple photos of the same subject at different points. So in this case, I'm going to move the focus of the camera all the way back to the back of the head of the spider. And then I'm going to move it forward and take a photo, move it forward, take a photo, and keep repeating that until I go all the way to the front. I'm gonna move very slowly and take a lot of photos, probably 40 to 50 photos. And as I take them, I'm gonna put them on the screen so you can see the focus start from the back and slowly crawl to the front with each frame. All right, so let's get started. All right, so that looks pretty good right there. I took this many photos. I lost count, so I'm gonna put it in post, and let's go see what it looks like in the computer. All right, so here we are on the computer, and here are all our files. We're gonna put this in our stacking software program, so let me move this to the side for a sec. Then we're gonna drag all the files in here, and once that's done loading, we're gonna to go to render, and this will probably take about five minutes, so I'm gonna just go ahead and skip ahead. All right, once it's done, you're gonna see the finished file here on the right. As you can see, we have the focus all the way to the back to all the way to the front. So instead of just this amount of focus, we get all of this focus. So let's go ahead and save the file. We're gonna go to saving and then save. And we'll title it jumping spider face. Wait for that to save. All right, let's go ahead and close this and let's go to Photoshop and edit this file. All right, so the first thing we'll do is edit it a little bit here in Camera Raw. I'm going to zoom out a little bit just so I can see the whole picture. And I think I just want to increase the highlights a bit. So it looks like a little bit more lights coming this way. And I want to make it a little sharper, so I'm going to add a little bit of texture. And I think that should be good. So let's go to Photoshop. All right, so here in Photoshop, we're going to clean up a few things on the photo. First, we're going to clean up these dust spots over here. Let me zoom in. These dust spots are present on my sensor and there's just a lot of them that I need to clean. But for now, we're just going to clean it with the lasso tool. So all we do is select it, press shift F5 and use content aware. And that tends to do a very good job. So I'm going to repeat that for the rest of the image. I'm going to speed it up a little bit just so you don't get bored. All right, that looks pretty good. Next thing we'll do is clean up this eyeball right here. 
There's a distracting piece of fuzz here that I want to clean up. And I don't think the lasso tool will work, so we're going to use the clone stamp tool. What I'm going to do is select the hair that looks similar to the one that's being blocked. So maybe this one. And then just gently draw it. Just like that. We'll do the same for this eye. We're going to get maybe this hair. There we go, that looks pretty good. While we're here, we'll clean up these little dust spots here as well. I'm gonna use the lasso tool. All right, that looks pretty good. And the next thing I'll do is clean up a few more dust spots that I think are distracting. So like this one is very distracting and bright. Maybe this one. So let's go and do that real quick. Let's try the clone stamp tool. Much better. Okay. Let's go find that other spot right here. Let's try the clone stamp tool. That looks pretty good. Zoom out, maybe fix this distracting little hair here. I'm gonna use the clone stamp tool. I'm gonna get hairs from maybe over here. I'll clean this up first. And then I'll get hairs from there. I'll just paint it in, just like that. Go ahead and clean these up. Just because it's a little too distracting. It's too bright, too white. Doesn't just it just comes right at you at your face. That's not bad. Okay, that looks pretty good, I think. Last thing we'll do is just crop it a tiny bit, maybe to center him. Maybe about right there. All right, and I think that's pretty good. I think we're done. All right, guys, and there you have it. That's how you take a photo of a dead jumping spider. If you have any questions about this video or macro photography in general, leave it in the comment section and I'll get to it as soon as I can. If you like the video, consider clicking on that thumbs up button down there. And if you wanna see more videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel. I have a lot of ideas in mind, so you'll see new videos soon. In the meantime, have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.